before my teens, I think I was a bit rotund yeah. um, because of the way I used to eat. Uh, when I went to high school, well, then I started to slim down a lot. But uh, and then I, yeah, I suppose I'm now actually the same way as what I was when I got married. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. Can you can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Let me get you on the right thing here. Okay. <laughs> there we go. I, I thought I'd um, contact you a bit earlier than we said. I just oh. just so as I can go through all of the uh, you know pressing this and pressing that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's How you been, pretty Ed? easy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, once once you uh, learn your way around it, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to meet you. Hey. You as well, Dante. Thank you for the um, the chance to have a chat with you anyway. Well, I appreciate the opportunity also because, um, you know, when I was an administrator at a retirement home, one of my concerns was, um, you know, recommending this to some of the folks that I worked with. And a lot of them were in their 70s as well. And <clears throat> I wasn't, you know, I just well, wasn't sure back then. I was, I was still 48 and I had just started doing this. And... Uh, it's nice to know that other folks that that are in that age group that I worked with before, you know, just a little bit older than me, but you know, it's it's good to hear that perspective. So I was glad to be yeah, able. Yeah, sure. All right, well, let's just get started then. How you doing, Yvonne? I'm fine, thank you, Dante. Fine down here in in Australia. Calling you at uh, ten o'clock at night, <laughs> and I believe it's about eight o'clock for you in the morning. Yes, it is. It's 8 a.m. So this is, uh, I would say this is the longest distance call I've made over the internet as far as a video call. I, I remember back in the 80s, I called a friend of mine who lived in Finland, but that was uh, that was an expensive call back then. Nowadays, it's free. Mm. <laughs> we can see each and other. And that's the best thing. <laughs> that's the best thing about it, being free. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I do love that part. Well, it's nice to have you on. You know, I, I saw your comment on uh, one of the other posts on the Facebook group, and I thought it would be interesting to hear your story as you were talking about how you and your husband had uh, really used this form of eating, this carnivore way of eating, to upgrade what you've been doing. And uh, yeah, I'd love yeah. for you to be able to share your story because I know there's a lot of people who watch my channel who are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and I believe you're in your 70s, right? You and your husband both? Yeah, we've just, I've, I've, I've just turned 17. Your husband's just turned 71. Okay. So um, we, wish, we wish we'd found this years ago. But, yeah, it's uh, never too, too, too old to start, I don't think. I start from where we we actually started off doing uh, intermittent fasting on what uh, something they called five two, so it was five days of basically eating normal and uh, two days of, of fasting. We was only allowed five hundred calories, but that was going back to well around about two thousand fourteen. Okay. And uh, yeah, we we did lose. Well, I, I lost a, a bit of weight, and so did uh, my husband, but not as much as what we did then went to carnivore uh, a few years later and then we did we cut out the carbs and, and everything but still once again not strict um we were still having you know maybe a couple of slices of bread and, and everything but i had always not always but a lot of the time i suffered with uh, reflux and i always put it down to you know fried foods and and everything um you know, eating bacon, too much bacon and, and what have you. But um, when we went carnivore and I cut out uh, the breads, no more reflux. Um, so basically we just carried on from there and just by chance, I don't know what, what it was, but my husband come across a, a carnivore YouTube clip and I think it, it possibly was uh, Dr. Berry, mm -hmm. but then uh, it, was, it went on to being Sean Baker and he said, what do you reckon about giving it a go? Well, I'm in for it, you know. But I was still sort of slightly leaning more 
uh, keto. So it's more keto raw because I was still having maybe uh, a few veggies and uh, an avocado. Uh, but he went fully into uh, carnivore, not not lion. He just went uh, fully into carnivore because we were still like, drinking uh, coffee and tea and everything. Um, so, yeah, and I found it to be so, so easy, so easy to do it, fit it into my lifestyle. And uh, so also um, my husband, he felt really good for doing it. And then his weight started to come off. And even on keto, I think the lowest I'd ever been down to was about um, 80 kilo. But then I started to lose more <laughs> going carnivore. So, uh, and I recently had a, a knee replacement, um, October last year, and the recovery on it was just amazing. Even, uh, even my orthopedic surgeon said, you know, you've, you've done so well uh, having this, this new knee. He said, we didn't expect you to make such a recovery as quickly as you did. Uh, I think I was supposed to have had something like six um, uh, goes with the uh, physiotherapist. And uh, I only ended up going twice because everything that uh, they gave me some some um, exercises and that to do. But every time I went back to him, I was further along than what they expected. So he said, I can't do anything else for you. You might just as well go home and keep doing the exercises. So and that's it. And now I'm walking so much better. I'm, I'm doing only a few kilometres a day. But and that's only going around basically our property. Uh, because we have about two and a half acres outside of our fence line. So I'm just walking round and round and round, uh, taking the dog with me for a, throwing the ball and that every afternoon. And it is, it's amazing. So uh, basically that's our story. <laughs> well, I know knees and hips can be definitely uh, tough surgeries to recover from, especially as you get older. Mm. So that's, that is remarkable. Yeah. Now, have you always been good with recovery for things, or was that kind of a new thing for you? Um, no, well, I've, I've sort of, this would be the first really major operation that I'd had. Um, recoveries uh, before, I, I suppose I've, I've never been too bad, but not as much as what I expected to get back on my feet with this. Um, I, in actual fact, while I was in the hospital, because you, you tell it, uh, when they are, come around and ask you, oh, what do you want to eat? What what is your you know your, your eating plan? Uh, I'm carnivore, and they go, oh yeah, you're one of those, are you? <laughs> <laughs> and so, but they they couldn't cater for me uh, apart from um, eggs, uh, bacon. I had eggs and bacon every morning for like for breakfast. But when it came to sort of lunchtime, uh, I said, just give me the meat. Don't worry about the vegetables. Um, do you want some bread with that? No, I don't need bread. Just give me some cheese on the side and, and butter. Make sure I've got plenty of butter. <laughs> so, uh, and that's what they got used to that. And so they was bringing me in cheese and butter all the time. <laughs> and then uh, the, the family, every, yeah, every time the family came in, they was bringing me in uh, uh, bags of jerky, um, you know, whatever they'd had for tea that night. It might be a, a chicken leg or a piece of steak or something. <laughs> So it was uh, it was really good. Yeah, it's but, it's, uh, well, it's hard to get people adjusted to that that thinking, isn't it? Because they just want you to be uh, normal like they are. I guess I, I don't I don't think it's, it's a malicious thing. I think it just comes from. Hmm. But don't you want this? This is what we want. <laughs> exactly, and that's what I try and get through to sort of my my children because um, my daughter, who's just about to turn fifty. Uh, she's pretty well overweight. She needs to lose some weight and she knows it. Um, she is uh, keto, but just to get her to go that one step further uh, and the other daughter, she, you know, she thinks that we're stupid, you know. <laughs> I can't take you anywhere because you don't eat anything what they, they dish up. I said, well, I would do. I'll just eat the meat and the cheese and, and the, um, the eggs. But, um, yeah, they just can't get their head around it. Not that they're saying that, you know, don't do it, but, um, you know, they're just uh, other people sort of look at you strange because that's the way you, you are. Yeah, but, but you know, it's more about how you feel, isn't it? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we, feel, we feel pretty good for it anyway. Did you struggle with your weight when you were younger? I know I did. All my no, um, not really. Not really. Uh, well, I suppose I suppose I, I did. I was um, quite a, a plumpish because I, I'm six foot, 
I'm six foot tall. Yeah. Uh, I'm sh shrinking a little bit now with age. But um, uh, when I was before my teens, I think I was a bit rotund yeah. um, because of the way I used to eat. Uh, when I went to high school, well, then I started to slim down a lot. But uh, and then I, yeah, I suppose I'm now actually the same way as what I was when I got married uh, and before having the children, which is a good thing. I think only at my heaviest I would have been about 100 kilo, and I, I'm now down to around about 76, 78. Between 76 and 78, I hover. Well, that's a but, significant um, difference. That's a lot of less weight. Oh, yeah. Frame, no doubt. And yeah, for sure. Older, um, you have those knee issues and hip issues. It really makes a difference too. So and that's that, that was it. And the, the work that I was doing uh, was going up and down stairs a lot. Well, actually, I found my, uh, one of my jobs was uh, cleaning in an a aged care home. And so, you know, you're getting down and, and doing the cleaning, cleaning showers and everything else. So that sort of takes a toll on you. Uh, we went from, I went from there into motels, cleaning motels. And once again, you know, bed making, getting down on the floors, doing showers and, and what have you. And then um, after that, when we moved to this place, I was in a, a, a macadamia nut farm um, and we was in the processing and... Um, I was a forklift driver and getting in and out of the forklift was really starting to take its toll on, on the knees and going up and down stairs carrying heavy buckets of macadamia nuts. Um, but, yeah, and that's when I was at my heaviest. I think a lot of it was to do with eating the macadamias, <laughs> which didn't help. And also macadamias are infl inflammatory as well. So you've done a lot of hard work in your life too. Have you noticed a difference in the, the joints and things like that, your, your pains? Yeah. Or have gone away that you had before yeah well, I, I do I, I really do I, I mean we're uh, on no medication or, or anything the only thing I do take is um, a magnesium and I have some uh, magnesium citrate in my uh, water mm -hmm. uh, with um, you know some uh, salt some uh, potassium and um, uh, an, an ordinary salt because we, we don't get Redmond salt over here <laughs> Not unless we get it on Amazon, anyway. <laughs> I understand. So, it's um, not easy to get, you know, the same stuff that I get in America. I'm surprised at how many folks around the world have picked up on this. But I'm just thankful, yeah, to be able to have helped, you know, other people see that you can do this, and it's you don't have oh, to yeah, be yeah. A doctor and all those things. You know, you just start <laughs> making choices for yourself that that make a difference. Speaking That's of choices, right, exactly. How do you, how do you, you know, how do you plan your day? I mean, because eating this way does take a bit of a, a willfulness to it because it's so easy to eat the normal way, if, especially if you live in town. Now, I, you live maybe a little more remote. Well, I'm not sure about your location. Yeah. But how is we're it? About, um, yeah, we're about, yeah, we're about. Yeah, we're about 50 k's outside of our main town, so we're only going to do our shopping uh, once a week. We normally go in on, on a Thursday and possibly on a Saturday if I've forgotten anything and also catch up with grandchildren and family. But uh, we're basically at home all day. Um, so uh, we start off, I don't know, around about 8 o'clock. We sit down and have a, uh, once we've got up, have a cup of tea, coffee. Well, he has it, still has a coffee, but I normally have a tea. Uh, did cut out the coffee, but he's gone back onto it again. But it hasn't really affected him much at all because it's, uh, yeah, it's just the way his body is. Um, and then come, we don't eat anything in between that. Come lunchtime, he'll have another coffee and I possibly will have a coffee and uh, maybe a bit of jerky. Um, we eat our main meal around about 3 o'clock, which we have done for years. So, um, and that will consist of uh, meat, eggs, um, chops, uh, lamb chops, anything that, that we've got going. Um, I cure my own bacon. Uh, we do a lot of smoking. That's good. And, um, yeah, we, it's, uh, so I cure the, my own bacon. And when we're doing a, a smoke, maybe each week, I'll put some um, uh, pork belly in there to smoke up for uh, slicing. And, uh, yeah, we'll eat that as well. And also, like yesterday, um, I 
bought a, a nice piece of, of what I'd, we call it rump steak or rump beef, a whole rump. And I think that might be the same as pretty much your sirloin. Okay. And um, we've been buying that uh, at a local um, supermarket, uh, which sells quite a good, a lot of good cuts of meat uh, at a reasonable price. And I think I paid it something like about eleven dollars, twelve dollars a kilo, which I think it work out about eight dollars a kilo for you uh, in your money. And uh, I think that was about a five kilo piece. So we sliced some up into steaks and a big chunk I took off and put it into the smoker yesterday. And we'll have that over the next couple of days. I'll just slightly um, do it in the air fryer, just slightly either side. And, yeah, it was absolutely beautiful. But we're, we're pretty well stocked with meat. Uh, and I just look out for whatever specials are going on, uh, especially with lamb. Yeah. And, um, you know, I cook them through the week as well. But yeah, basically, we we it's only one meal a day, and then what I say maybe a bit of jerky. Uh, on a weekend, we might have uh, some eggs and bacon for breakfast, but um, it j just depends on how we are. But normally, we do on on a weekend, maybe a Saturday and Sunday, we'll have eggs and bacon for breakfast. But then there'd be nothing until three o'clock till our main meal. Now I know he, um, yeah. here in the states, a lot of folks that that are retired, they're on a, a retirement or they're on social security or something like that. Yeah. You mentioned that you guys live on a pension, so you're on a fixed income. Yeah. Or? Okay. Yes, we are. Yeah. How did how did this switch into? The, and by the way, yeah, I don't do coffee, even though I have a coffee cup. I, I use hot <laughs> water, salt, and it still <laughs> does a great job. I found that I still get the the feeling that I want from coffee. So I know what it's like to try to get away from it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, how did, yeah. <laughs> did it affect you financially um, switching to this way of eating, even from keto? Yeah, well, uh, I suppose it did at first. But when you think um, now, when I sort of look back and you go over what you need, it's so quick to get around the shops because all I need is like the basics for washing up liquid, soap for washing um yeah, it, it's just so quick and easy. Uh, some, I mean, when I need to stock up on meat, obviously uh, a bulk of our, our uh, income or the money that I've set aside for shopping will go on to that. Right. But um, I think, uh, as I say, do the outsides of the uh, the shopping centre or the, the, the shop because that's where your, your good stuff is. You don't want the stuff up and down the aisles because that's uh, the stuff that you don't need to be eating, packaged and um, processed food. So, And we don't do processed food. Um, yeah. I, my, my butcher, the butcher that I do go to, um, he will do some sausages up for me, but you have to buy five kilo at a time, and I state what I want in them. So there's no fillers whatsoever. Uh, the ones that he's done this just recently, just uh, – beef and pork and he done a 50% beef and pork together and made them a 70-30 so there was 70% 70, 70 uh, meat to 30% fat and they are absolutely brilliant so um, you know we make up a meal out of that but uh, as for every, anything else I don't really buy anything at all that's um, packaged I cleaned out my cupboards when we went carnivore I said that's it Cupboards are being cleaned. Uh, I don't think if anyone come here and they needed sugar, well, tough. You'll have to go without. We don't take sugar, so you're not having it. <laughs> yeah, it does so, take a different mindset. So yeah, you're uh, you're you're basically you know you plan you plan around the sales and the specials that you can get a hand your hands on. You stock up a freezer yeah. or something like that and keep a lot of meat on hand. Yeah. Yeah, I've got my freezer and everything, and I, I found that um, I've also got um, the vacuum sealer uh, for vacuum sealing your, your food. Uh, I've also bought these the reusable bags that you've got your pump, and you can you know va basically vacuum seal with that as well, and so that the meat will keep a, a lot longer. Uh, and yeah, but my my freezer's pretty well stocked. In actual fact, I've still got vegetables, frozen vegetables that I bought. Oh, would have been last year because we had a shortage uh, like with the pandemic and everything. Everyone was going out and buying everything up and you couldn't get vegetables. So I stocked up on that. So I've got to take actually a, a draw load of vegetables over to the girls, over to my daughters and say, well, there you go. You can have them because I don't need them. <laughs> uh, one thing I will make, um, and they are crackers and they um, 
they're a cheesy sort of cheesy uh, cracker which i use pork um pork rinds in it you know i grind grind up uh, some pork crackle and um a, a little bit of almond flour and uh basically parmesan tea, uh, cheese and that's all it is it says those three ingredients and water uh and they are you know they we might just have a couple of them throughout the week yeah so that, that's about my extent of baking anyway no i have to be careful with even little stuff like that because when i start adding just a little something that i've tried it so many times since i've been online yeah. diet, like i tried to go through the fruit thing but it just got to where i wanted mm. fruit all the time and i said well, oh, yeah just too much for me to overcome so it was easier not to think about it by not having it at all but I'm glad you're yeah, able exactly. to moderate whatever makes you feel comfortable and keeps your weight where you like it to be and your health where you like oh, it. Oh, yeah. I have to come down on my husband sometimes and say, well, you know, you've had enough. You don't need any more. And, you know, we, we do. We have um, sort of modu moderated ourselves um, as to not eating too many of anything. Well, that's the uh, real beautiful still, part. You guys do it together. And that, there's so many yeah, people. It's, I think you need that support on each other. Uh, and I think that would, uh, like I say, my daughter needs to, to do something about her weight drastically because she is suffering with her knees already at the age of 50. Mm. Um, I, I'm doing far better than what she is, but um, it needs, I think she just needs the support of the rest of her family as well to, um, you know, maybe take it that step further. Well, hopefully it won't but, be uh, something too drastic that brings her to the point she needs to do something because I know that's where I was when yeah. I, I found Lion Diet was I was just at the end of my rope and I felt like if I didn't do something different, I was going to die. What the heck I wanted yeah. to, I was at that point where it was either just forget yeah. or, you know, change your thinking. And that's what it came <laughs> down to. I had to change my thinking. So I'll, I'll encourage her with that, that, you know, it's, it's better yeah. to do it with your rational mind and say, you know what, I need to make a change before your body says mm. you better make a change or else because it hurts a lot more yeah well like i say we're, we're not on any forms of drugs or, or anything um touch wood um but i have i will be going to see my doctor this thursday because he's called me i never made an appointment he's called me to to see me and i think it's just a, a case of well do you still need to see a doctor or, or do i take you off my books you know <laughs> so I said to, to Ted, I said, I'd better go and see him and see what he wants. And uh, I will tell him that what I'm doing as well, I'm, I'm sure he wants to make a health plan for me because, you know, you're over 70 and you need to do this. And, and, and all, all your blood pressure really needs to be checked. Well, I check my blood pressure and it's fine, thank you. You know, uh, but I, and see what his reactions are when I say that I'm, I'm carnivore. Yeah. You know? Be interesting. I'd love <laughs> so, to hear about that. Yeah, well, I'll have to let you know once I've been and seen him. But, yeah, I mean, like I say, I do check my blood pressure and it all seems to be going okay for me anyway. Uh, Cholesterol-wise, I think I had a check done a couple of years ago, so I might ask him just to do another uh, check. Um, but to have a full blood check done here, it can work out quite expensive. To have yeah. just my uh, cholesterol and everything checked, it's, it's all free. So I won't have to pay for that, but uh, to have a, a full blood test, I will ask him about it and uh, see what he comes back with. If he says it's uh, they can do it, well, then he can do it. But I don't feel like I'm um, lacking in anything. Uh, we do take um, iodine. Mm. Uh, we, we take the iodine. Uh, I've got iodine drops we just uh, put into uh, our tea or he has it in his coffee, just a couple of drops every day. So, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, as, say, as, yeah, as like I say, for a feeling like I'm lacking in anything, I don't think so. <laughs> sleep is awesome. <laughs> yeah. What, what was it like I, before? I Did you have a difficult time sleeping oh, before? Very much. Yeah, very much. Uh, it was uh, not the best at all. Uh, I'd, I'd sort of lay awake uh, half the night and, um, you know, you'd feel really groggy in the morning. Yeah. Uh, but now, you know, I, I do. I sleep pretty well. Ted's always slept pretty good, but I think he's uh, even more so at the moment. I definitely will be sleeping in tomorrow because our temperatures dropped down really, really low uh, over these past couple of days. We've had a bit of a cold spell come through. Yeah, you're heading into uh, your cold, cold season down there, aren't you? 
yeah, we're uh, we just um, our winter starts first of June. Okay. So we're we're just uh, we're just uh, still in in uh, autumn at the moment. But it's coming really quickly because last week uh, we had all the doors open. I think it was still sitting up at around, oh, no, 27, 28 degrees. And uh, tomorrow it's just dropping down to 21, but it's going down to 7. Uh, no, sorry, it's going down to 5 degrees overnight tonight. So uh, hence I've got my jumper on. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit cool. Well, I know but, you, uh, you were uh, talking about your doctor situation. And I wanted to get back to that for a moment because it, it sparked something interesting to me. When I was the administrator of a retirement home here, I had gotten used to the idea in my head that you just go see your doctor. You have to go see your yeah. doctor because every three months they've got to give you new prescriptions and things. Now, you mentioned you didn't have any health issues. Did your doctor have you yeah. on any prescriptions before for anything? No, no, I, I, I did, or go, like I said, I did suffer with reflux going back a, a, f a few years ago uh, and I was getting something for that. But like I say, as soon as I gave up carbs, uh, p in particular bread mm -hmm. uh, and um, what you, or biscuits or cookies, giving those up as well, um, it, it made a big difference. And I thought, well, hell. You know, it wasn't the, the bacon and everything after all. It, this, it, this is what it was, so do I need it? I mean, I've, I've still got a, uh, some bread. I've still got some bread in my uh, freezer at the moment and that would have been there for about the, I don't know, the last year. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that goes out for the birds anyway. But, Did they have you on something prescription for reflux? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, and I can't for the life of me think what it was, but it, it was something on the prescription. But uh, um, uh, I'm trying to think. With I think I, they gave me something for my knees as well for you know for the pain uh, for for my knees. But uh, that used to, that did upset me, and I just said no, I, I can't take that anymore. So I just pushed it to one side. Was so, seeing a doctor um, a regular yeah. thing though before this way of eating? Was that um, got in the no, I'd, I'd say maybe once every uh, couple of months, uh, just for your normal like, colds and, and everything else. But once again, touch wood, we haven't suffered with uh, flus or colds or anything, yeah. no COVID. So <laughs> not that yeah, well, I've, noticed, you know, I've noticed the same for myself too. And that's why I was curious if it was similar to what you were experiencing. If you had to go from seeing a doctor all the time on a regular basis because you had to get a prescription for this or you just had to get follow-ups because you were on medication, mm. that change of going to where, what do I need to see a doctor for? I feel great. Oh, exactly. You, so you I, That's what I say. I think, I think that's why he needs to see me because it's been so long since I've been there. Um, he's thinking, well, you know, what's wrong with this woman? Why she, you know, doesn't want to see me? She's in her seventies now and yeah. um, hasn't been to see me in, in months. You know. Well, God but bless hell, them. Well, like I think they say, come from a good place yeah. with it. I think they want to be, you know, just taking care of their their patients. And I try not to always assume that it's just because they're part of this machine that's going on with the healthcare industry. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think they're a little worried when people are too healthy it seems like like they're not they're just not expecting somebody to get healthy and no, stop eating them no, no but, that's that's the whole thing it's um yeah it just seems to be a bit of a, a money-making machine really doesn't it you know yes i, I mean yeah. not, i don't like to say that but uh, yeah it's uh every time they see a patient you know cha-ching another patient cha-ching it's yeah. Uh, yeah, a bit more money in their coffers. And so, it, having uh, been uh, one to take them to their appointments all the time, the thing that I would notice is that a lot of times they would go in and say, so how is everything? And you just have a little nice conversation, not really a whole lot of mm -hmm. talk about what your, any issues you've been having. And then they just say, okay, here's all your refills and you're off. Yeah. Them, well, like, I, I, time clock. Yeah, and I lost <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly. I, I lost my brother uh, two years ago. To um, he he had a heart heart attack, but he was also um, a diabetic, uh, yeah. insulin dependent. But I'm I sorry. really, you know, after going on on this way of life and and seeing the sort of things that he that that the um, diabetic 
clinic was uh, telling him that he had to eat the way he had to live and yeah. i'm thinking that's that's not wrong you know that that was just wrong uh, i think had he been had that opportunity to have changed his diet now this was in the uk because yeah. i don't know if you can understand i'm from the uk right um uh being over there and, and trying to sort of yeah just the way that they treated them for for diabetes and, and seeing the food that they still prescribed for them to eat it was just not right and i was you know if i could have talked him around to to maybe eat and even keto would have been far better for him but yeah. when um when they you know you're going to hospital and they're still giving you um jello and and, and stuff like that to to eat uh, tinned fruit that's got you know heaps and heaps of sugar yeah. uh, or you know telling you to keep off of make everything low fat and it's um yeah it, but that's it it's just brainwashing we've been brainwashed for forever i i was the same you know when i was brought up in in the uk um we was or, or actually you get to a certain stage and everything was going low fat and um and you think well, that, well that's the right way to go or oh, don't eat the fat on that that meat because you you've got to you know you're going to get fat if you eat the fat and and that's it that's the way you've been brainwashed forever yeah i remember uh, feeling yeah. exactly the same way even when i did the uh atkins diet back in the 2000s i remember thinking why would i buy ribeyes with all this fat when i can get sirloins cheaper and have all the fat already trimmed off i thought i would make <laughs> good choices and I didn't realize how big of a deal it was until I started adding the fat. But I had totally, I, I back in the 80s, I remember seeing them like Richard Simmons or something like that. It wasn't Richard Simmons, but it would be almost an infomercial type of situation. And they'd have this big vat and they'd have it filled with yellow material that looked like fat. And they would say, this is what's in your body if you're eating fat all the time and things like that. And <laughs> I remember thinking, well, I don't want that. I'm struggling to get my weight under control, so I was always trying to avoid eating fat. And then when yeah. I was in my um, early 30s, and they told me I had to have my gallbladder taken out, I didn't know any of this back then, but it turns out it's probably because the bile sits in your gallbladder because it's not being used yeah. to process fat, and it just sits there and gets hardened and turns into stones. Because they couldn't tell me that's what caused right, yeah. it or how it happened, but I think that's why a lot of people are having these gallbladder removals is because they're following the low-fat advice, and then their body starts breaking down because it's not using what it's supposed to be using. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've seen so many people on like keto pages and, and even down to carnivore saying, oh, but I haven't got a gallbladder. Um, but, you know, what caused that? Why did you have to have that taken out? You know, right. uh, and, th and then you start going over things and you think, oh, you know, a little light bulb comes on. Maybe it was all done because everything was, um, you know, being low fat and, and everything uh, prior because of the, say, the brainwashing. Yeah. I know, I know you haven't mentioned this, but I'm curious to know if you've noticed any difference in your dental health or your jaw strength or anything. Yeah. Doing oh, something. yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. We, we yeah for for sure uh, i was actually saying to my husband the other day about you know i, I can tell or I, I have lost quite a few of my teeth but uh, the ones that i have got are a lot stronger um my teeth feel so much cleaner yeah you know it, it, there's there's no sort of plaque build up like it uh, like i would get in before uh, with with eating sugary stuff or even down to eating fruit you know you still you just don't get that plaque build up so it's um yeah it's a lot better. I think when people ate a lot more meat in the older days too, we did. I don't I don't know that you're going to see a lot of writing about people having their wisdom teeth taking out prior to the past hundred years when we started eating all this mush. Mm. And by yeah. going back to that, I've noticed that my jaw strength is better. And I had my wisdom teeth taken out when I was younger, but I think to myself, yeah. you know, that's one more thing I've let them remove from me because I wasn't learning about what I was eating. And I was just following. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. yeah, well, it's good to know that because I know that especially as you get older and you're worried about things like maybe even having to wear dentures or something, then you, you mm. want to take care of your teeth. And I noticed that when I, when I eat this way, I never have that feeling of grittiness on top of my teeth that I usually get after I eat something <laughs> sugary or 
yeah that's that's the whole thing you, you don't feel that like i say that mouth yeah like you say the stickiness the the grittiness on your teeth it's it's completely different how do you uh, deal with that mess between your <laughs> getting stuck between your teeth yeah well i have to get the um the dental floss and everything out for that <laughs> yeah i use uh, yeah. myself yeah 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 so well, it's, uh, yeah, I've got that all worked out anyway. <laughs> well, hopefully, maybe if you've got some uh, pictures of your before and after, we can use some of that to share with folks so they can kind of get an idea of how the change has helped you and your husband, if, if he doesn't mind sharing that too. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, I think I, I the more people that get to share their story like you are here, the more other people out there that are watching this and maybe they're closer to your age, they look at me and say, ah, that's fine for him because he's, you know, younger than me, but I'm 70 years old. I shouldn't do this. So what would you say to those people? Oh, I'd, I'd say take it, do it. You, you have to uh, give it a go because it's, um, it is life changing. And like I said, I wish we'd found it a long time ago uh, and, and change this to this way of eating. So it's just, it is just so easy. Um, you haven't got to stop and think about what you what you're going to be preparing for you know the, the next night or for the next meal you can um yeah slap a piece of steak in there do some bacon do some eggs sausages whatever you want to do yeah uh, i still do i still do dairy i, I still have uh, only a little bit of cheese uh, i had a little bit of cheese earlier tonight um just because i fancied it uh, I still have cream in in my my coffee. I always it's you know um, I mean we use butter uh, quite a lot. I use sour cream if I'm doing um, uh, something like a, a casserole or something. I'll put a, a, a big blob of sour cream in it. Um, uh, the steaks that we done tonight, like I said, I, I we'd smoke this uh, lump of meat and I cut them off fairly thick and just warmed them up in the air fryer. But I put some um, butter on top and just let it melt over it. and it was absolutely beautiful it really was good yeah i found so, butter um, is about the only thing i can tolerate well any other dairy tends to cause me to have more congestion but it's different for each person yeah. i think it's just their yeah, reaction to dairy and some people don't have it and that's that's good oh, for that's you right, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah it's it's good for me and it, it does give me that bit of extra fat that i need um but yeah it's it's um i was just say it's just so easy I love it <laughs> and i can't see that we're ever going to change we're not going to go back not now yeah so uh i mean if they have to put us in an old people's home well then they're just going to have to get used to feeding this meat the only thing is the meat is really starting to to go up in price because i think there's a lot of i wouldn't say a lot of people going carnivore but there's a lot of people are, are you know heading back towards meat and i think they're picking up on on the cheap cuts now yeah. Whereas, you know, you used to get your cheap cuts, now people are buying them and they're thinking, oh, maybe we just bump the price up a bit, you know. But, well, there's uh, there's a few other things going on in the meat industry that's being manipulated. Mm -hmm. Power concerns that, that concern me, of course, because, you know, we being a carnivore, it does make it more expensive. But overall, you know, we, we, we got to do what we got to do. But I think as more mm -hmm. people push this direction as the demand grows somebody's going to step in and mm -hmm. fill the gap and i'm hoping it's going to be a lot more local ranchers that realize hey there's yeah. there's i have a market i can sell to right here maybe i don't have to go deal with these people who bottom dollar they give them the bottom dollar and then they turn around and sell the meat at top dollar you know yeah. That's yeah. kind of been undercutting the the ranchers and making it hard for people who do a good job of farming to make a living mm. so yeah that's yeah that's exactly that's right. definitely an issue yeah. that we all need to be watching over and hopefully uh if we can support our local ranchers i think it helps the best but yeah yeah, yeah. with more people well, we, eat, i've noticed the difference when i go to the store i can't ever find anything that's the manager markdowns because there's nothing that sits long enough for them to mark it down <laughs> Yeah, you have to be in the right place at the right time. Like I said, the, the place where we go to, uh, I look for their specials. Uh, normally, uh, they put out their catalogue maybe on a, a Wednesday and I do my shopping on Thursday, so I make a list and, and see what's going out. And, um, yeah, and if they've got, like I say, buying these whole rumps that are around about five and a half, five and a half 
the six kilos, which I suppose would be more on, well, was it two two point two pounds to a kilo? So that'd be basically just over twice the amount for you, about twelve yeah. pounds. So if they're going out at a reasonable price, uh, we'll pick up maybe one or two, um, and then you know I always check the dates to make sure that they're going to be because they're all cryovac'd anyway. So we just leave them in the bottom of the fridge until we need it, and then tend to take it out, and then here slice it up or chunk it up, or and um, you know, I'll put it through my uh, Instapot, and um, you know it does a quick meal, a, a quick stew, stewed meat. It comes up really good. Um, and like I say, I add a dollop of sour cream into that, and it goes, <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> Well, it's great to hear your story and that you and your husband have done so well. You you mentioned that he, had, I don't think we talked about it real quick though, but you said that he had uh, lost some weight doing this too. What, where, yep. where did he go yeah, from? Yeah, he, he, he was up to around about 116, between 116 and 118 kilos. And um, he's now sitting at around about uh, 93, 93, 94. So he seems to have stalled a bit. So we're trying to sort of work on that, trying to add a bit of fat, trying to tweak things a bit to try and bring that weight down just that bit more, but not carrying the weight, amount of weight around because, let's say, he's lost a lot more than what I, I did. Like I say, I, I got down with doing keto but never got down to what I am now. Yeah. So, so for um, him, that's yeah. I guess that's probably close to 60 or more pounds. Oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. If you've ever been to a gym and you've seen those great big round metal plates that the guys put on to, yeah. uh, those are yeah. 45 pounds. So just imagine yeah. carrying one of those around and that. another one. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. You, you just don't realize the amount. I mean, even if you look at the, um, uh, I used to sort of look at the uh, bags of sugar that we used to, you know, carry home. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're looking at a, a two two kilo bag of sugar, and you think, well, I've just lost two kilo, and look at the weight that's in that. It's really very heavy. Yeah. Uh, so, but I was, you know, you're carrying all that on your your bones, on your knees, and on on your feet, and everything. So, it's um. But you know, where we live, the area that we live is a very high uh, population of very overweight people, overweight and obese, and. Um, you, you sort of look at them walking around the shopping centres and you think you could do something about that and, and you feel like going up and shaking them and saying, what are you doing to yourself? You see them with their, their burgers in their hand and a, you know, a Coke in the other hand and you think, for God's sake, do something for yourself. Um, but That is exactly you know, the reason why I wanted to have you on and come talk about this because sometimes when, when I deal with people in the carnivore community all the time, I can forget that folks are just they, they're not aware of this at all and they, if they are aware of it or they heard of it they, they might still be a little nervous about it or like your you know your daughter says they think you're a little nuts with it and that's not healthy and maybe your doctor's going to be concerned and you, you get a lot of pushback on it but i think the more people we have just like you and like me that have gone from a lifestyle where we were carrying a lot of extra weight we didn't need or in my case mm -hmm. having health issues that doctors couldn't explain but as soon as I started eating this way, mm. everything. It's, it's all gone. Yeah. yeah, everything changes. It is. It's a whole – it is a, a way of life. You can't say that it's a diet. It's a, it is a way of life. It's a way of eating. So, um, yeah, I, I don't like to call it a diet at all. It's, it is um, definitely a lifestyle. Yes. And, you know, if, if we can do it, I know everybody else could, could give it a go. Just, Just – like I say, even if you don't want to give up your veggies completely and just go to the above ground veggies that's, that's suitable and, until you maybe make that transition. Because a lot of people do, you know, want to give it a go, but they're just unwilling just to you know, go that one step further. Yeah. But, um, well, yeah, like I, I say, mean, it, it, depends on, it depends on your level of need. If, you, if you're at that point where it's either – this or death, you know, that's the way I felt. Then it, it's a lot easier. Oh, for sure. If you're just if you're yeah. just kind of going along, thinking, you know, I, I need to do something different. It is you might have to ease into it. And mm. I would say if you can yeah. kick processed foods, you're going to take yourself a whole lot farther. Just at least starting there. Stop stop eating the stuff that's on the aisles in the grocery store, in the box. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. 
keep to the outside they say keep to the outside aisle and but we just make our way straight to the meat meat department so, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know get what we've got to get there so uh yeah <laughs> I figured you'd pretty much given as much as you're comfortable with now. I appreciate you taking oh. the time to come and sit and talk with me. I mean, we've been going on now for 40 minutes, so it's it's. Uh, it's oh, really? Is it that long? <laughs> it doesn't feel it like, it. like it. Does it? <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's because yeah. we feel good. We feel better than we did before. So when we get to talk about the things we love, it just uh, yeah. Time goes by. I think. Well, I appreciate you yeah. coming sharing your story with us and uh, I wish the best to you and your husband and uh, for your daughter I, I say hey give it a go sweetheart you never know it could it could change everything for you and uh, yeah I think it will I really think it will I think I, I think it would would help her a, a great deal but uh, even if you just try it for six weeks just put that in your head that's yeah. how I started I said I'm gonna do it for six weeks I'm gonna give it a try I'm gonna do this for six weeks and here I am two years and three months later and still doing it because I love it. And it's yeah, and, never... and a lot lighter, a lot healthier. Yeah. All right, yeah. Yvonne. All right. You guys you take much, care Dante. this winter. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <We'll do. laughs> okay. I'll, I'll hopefully catch up with you another time anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'll, 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 let you, I'll, I'll let you know about the doctor as well. Perfect. That would be uh, great. It, I'd love to hear about it. it out. Okay. All right. All right. We'll talk to you then. See you soon. Bye. Bye, Yvonne. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?